Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Okay, so today we're gonna to look at another unique insight and we're gonna look at uh, all of our customers and we're gonna say, okay, how many products or how many unique products out of the suite of products that say we sell has um, have customers bought? And we could analyze this over time or we could analyze this um, per, uh, per anything in our data model, right? And I guess I guess the, the, the great thing is, is it's not actually truly that difficult to achieve this sort of insight. So I'm going to show you how, exactly how you can do it. So I've just set up um, just set up a few visualizations here. We've got say total sales by customer, etc. Now we have to think, okay, if we want to work out uh, how many unique products each customer has bought off us, well let's just um, try and think, okay, what happens to um, the tables and behind the scenes when, when uh, a filter is placed. So if we want to evaluate this in a customer context, you've got to think, well, that customer will be filtered in this table here, right? And then that filter will propagate down this relationship, hit this table, and then this custom ID will be filtered for each individual customer. And so each individual customer, this table is going to be filtered, and then we have our product ID here, which is going to show us, uh, which is going to be a column or a dimension in our, our table that we could then iterate over and see well how many unique items are left after that filter is put in place. And so Power BI has a really great function that enables us to do this called distinct count. And say, and so I can just go unique product support. And then all I've got to do is use distinct count and then iterate or go, or go over or go and find those unique products inside the sales table. And so all I've got to do is go work out how many um, product IDs there are, how many unique product IDs there are. And so if I then bring this into this particular context, you will now see, okay, well, this customer bought 19 unique products off us. So out of all, and this is through time because I've got no date filter at all filtered here. And so we could then we could then sort this, I guess, and, and say, well, okay, well, our high, our, our best customer, they're not from a from a revenue perspective, they weren't our best, but they bought um, 29 items. That was the most anyone bought of us. And so then we could analyze this even further. And then what's uh, etc. We could, or we can, so we could, sorry, we could visualize this further. But what's also cool is we could we could say dive into any elements in our model. And this is just what I'm doing. You know, this is just in this case, I'm I'm going to create some additional context from uh, this this spatial visualization. I'm going to select this particular store, and we're going to see. Okay, well, this person has bought four items of us in the time frame um, of our sales table. And then what's I mean, so that's the, the the data discovery is is pretty is just second to none, right? And then what's cool is that we could, in theory, we could also just set up another table, so we could say, okay, well, let, let's actually create another table of say our product names, uh, the locations. So I'll go and grab the store name, and then I will go and have a look at. Uh, I'll also bring my customer name, and we could then say, okay, well, what was the sale of that particular product? And we could bring in lots of other elements as well. But what we could do is we could then say, okay, well, uh, we could then select this customer and look at all of the individual products that they did actually buy. So we could say, okay, well, here are the 29 products that we bought. And we could then say, I guess, switch that. Or we could say, say, well, what was the high or low sale per product, etc. So lots of good ways to really dive into your data, right? And as you can see, this is a pretty random data set because this person's just buying off us all over the place. So it's not, you know, it's not, not totally realistic. Um, and you know, if you think about it, but anyway, it's just the, the I wanted to showcase the data discovery from from what is not that too difficult an insight, right? It's just understand the key to this one, the key to uh, this learnings, this learning around DAX is context, right? So context is coming from this customer name. Uh, table of the, the this column in this table is saying okay go and filter for Brian Kim we're working out what his total sales are by just summing up the revenue column or in this case I'm uh, I'm doing a little bit more logic there but then we're saying also go and evaluate the distinct count of the product ID column after that context or after that filter is put in place and then through this formula we can then go count up all those unique items and there you have it and so, and I was just thinking, maybe, maybe we want to actually go down the bottom just to make sure that it's actually um, 
easier for us to easy for us to I guess audit the number so we could say okay well seven items and yes so seven items come up for Jack Lewis okay so uh, hopefully hopefully you, you um, got a bit out of you got a lot out of this um, this tutorial and you can see how um, you know you can apply you know such a relatively simple DAX formula um, into into your own environments okay so uh, don't forget to subscribe if you if you if you're liking the content certainly want to get it to you as soon as it comes out so um, good luck with this one. Take care. I will speak to you soon. Cheers.